Hello everyone and welcome to the 29th annual Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host, Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live from Yavapai College. Yavapai College is one of our sponsors, along with Northern Arizona Healthcare. And we'd like to thank all our hoteliers, restaurant, restaurateurs, and chefs, and everybody who's been providing for us. We thank you so much for being a part of this year's festival. And joining me now are the filmmakers and I want to say the star of it all, <laughs> Joyce Tennyson and Rebecca and Randy from the film Unveiled and the heroine's um, story. Joyce and Tennyson and the heroine's journey. Yes, thank you. And welcome to Sedona. We love it here. <laughs> it's just you. so magical. Even it, when it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But not as cold as when I talked to you last in Maine, because that was like, what, minus... 43, I think minus, you told minus me. Minus 48 wind chill or something. Oh my like goodness. I know. And then all of a sudden, I think the wind, I think you brought the wind. Yeah. <laughs> the two days we were there <laughs> finishing the film. Yes. Well, awesome. Well, welcome. It's so nice having you here. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so um, talk to us a little bit about the film. Who wants to start? Sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, you, you start. <laughs> Well, so this is the star, Joyce Tennyson. She's a, a very famous photographer, was once named one of the top 10 most important female photographers in the history of photography. Um, so she's the real deal. And um, we met three or four years ago, and along with our third partner in the film, uh, named David Wright, who's a, just a beautiful cinematographer and our co-director and co-producer, um, we started working with Joyce to kind of tell her story and the story of her life. So that was uh, about four years ago we started that journey, and we did a lot of photography and filming with her. Uh, we had a really wonderful um, event that we created that you'll see in the film where she shot most of her career or much of her career on a very large format 20 inch by 30 inch Polaroid camera and it's this giant box and it's just all sorts of buzzing and cranking and it's a fun extravaganza and that's how she she um, used that for most of her career so we brought that to Maine so that she could do some of her work with her magic with models and so we um, we started down that journey to tell the story both of her photography but also her life as someone who really had to fight against uh, in the 70s quite frankly a, a, a male dominated art curating world mm -hmm. um, and she just kept following her voice and that's something she talks about throughout the film and it was just a a fun journey and along the way um, we learned a lot about her personal life and certain interesting things of her personal life kind of came up in the middle of the film which makes the film about much more than photography it makes it about life so yeah and i think um you know one of the things that we discovered making the film which is why i think joyce's personal story became so important to the film is that you know joyce was very influenced by the uh, joseph campbell's work hero mm -hmm. with a thousand faces and you know, that book was really about, Joyce says in the film, about how men go out to the world to discover who they are. And Joyce wanted to do that. And so... Yeah, when the, I, I finished the book, I thought, oh, this is about me. This is what I want to do in my life. And then it clicked, like, but they're all men. And I made up my mind right then that nothing would stand in my way. I'm going to speak in my own voice. I don't care who likes it. I'm just going to, I'm going to have the strength to be able to do that. I don't care. I'm going to do it. Joyce, do you remember what year that was when you actually read that book? Well, uh, probably 1973 or four, something like that. Mm -hmm. A long time ago. But Joseph Campbell, uh, you know, was was such a major figure, and I think a lot of people, viewers, might remember if you're old enough that they had a PBS series on Joseph Campbell's, which I uh, uh, and and mythology. Mm -hmm. So I, I loved that series. But one of the things we found very interesting about that was that then and also now, to some extent, for. Uh, a man to go out and find himself in the world and to chart his own course is very different than for a woman and, and the implications of what that means for a woman. And Joyce dealt with that a lot. And so that becomes a theme in the film that I think is really interesting about <clears throat> what it means to chart your own course and how that's different for men and women. And ironically, in, those, in the 1970s, as you really started to launch your career, she, in fact, encountered a lot of resistance about her style, which was very feminine and soft and mostly female models by the male photography world who 
who kind of said, we don't consider this photography. We're not sure if this is art or photography. But it, it wasn't meeting what they thought was the, the standards for photography of the day in that sort of elite world. Um, and she just continued to pursue her own voice. And I, I know one of the, I remember one of the comments you made during the, the making of the film was that, you know, they, they said that the, my, my work was too feminine and too soft. As if and, I were trying <laughs> to be that, you know? I was yes. just speaking from what I felt was my inner core, my essence, and just trying to, to, to tap into that and make photographs that resonated with that core. So uh, it, it was, and they said, and thus, it's not, it's not a universal. And I was like, but wait a second, we're 51% of the population, women are, you know, and maybe I, I, I didn't come up with that right then, but I've since thought about that. It, 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 but it is so much better for women now, and it's just, I'm so happy to see uh, the changes that have happened, might I say, actually really in the last three or four years. It's taken a long time, but there is, you know, as, as, as the, our culture has grown in terms of gender and everything else, uh, I've seen a, a really wonderful uh, change. and. But I think it's wonderful for the younger photographers and artists and writers and filmmakers to understand the, the journey that they've inherited and... and, uh, and uh, well, and in the film, she's being modest, but in the film, there are some of the most prominent and successful young female photographers in the world today who are in the film saying <coughs> that thanks to Joyce because 20, 30 years ago when she stuck to her vision and created that visualization that then became very popular and there was a period during the 1980s when her, her cover art was on the cover of every major fashion photo, uh, and, and sort and of the New York popular, Times New York magazine, Times magazine. Yeah. and, and the, those people who are in the film today say we saw that as young people we saw Joyce's career we saw the fact that she had children had a child and could still pursue her career and that told us we could do it too so you say there's changes the last three or four years but people in the film say we have Joyce to thank for that mm -hmm. Well, and I think it's a lot bigger than that because, first of all, number one, you've inspired me. Um, I was very familiar with jo jo Joseph Campbell, but I actually went out and bought um, that book that you referred to because I was like, you know what, I want to read that. And I'm very familiar with the heroine's journey only because as a filmmaker, the filmmakers go through the hero's journey. So, I mean, the hero's journey. Um, so, you know, that um, alone inspired me. But just like you said, it's changing a little bit but to hear your story and to hear other women's story about the struggle and how you actually had to break through to, um, to do what you wanted to do, with, regardless of whether it was family who right. said, no, you can't do this, whether it's someone saying, you can't do it, but right. look, look what you've done. Well, thank you, thank you. And, and I would just like to say that, you know, I. I'm somebody who just loves learning, and and one of my most favorite project is a book called Wise Women. And when I was in my 50s, I was really afraid that I would, in some of the expressions that were around then, go to seed or be over the hill. And it started to bother me, so I thought, well, why don't I photograph and interview women who are 65 to 100? Because remember when we used to think retirement was 65? Well, of course, artists never retire, right? But, <laughs> but still. Um, and so I went to 10 different um, states and I photographed, you know, women. I found former students of mine who lived in these places because I didn't have a big budget, you know, to do all of this. And I'd stay on their couch and ask them to introduce me to some women that they found were in their community who were exceptional for one reason or another. And so that was the, you know, like the most exciting part of, in a way, of my career, learning so much about these wise women and how it doesn't matter what your, you know, whether, we're, what your station in life was, because I, I did 20% celebrities, people like, you know, a Jane, uh, Dame Judi Dench, and you know, Jane Fonda. Uh, yes, My and Angela. Credit Scott King, and all of that. And what I found is that wisdom didn't come from necessarily from having uh, been gifted with 
those kinds of big lives. Some of the, uh, the might I say, the, the women that I found were, were the wisest were teachers, believe it or not. You know, there were, I have some quotes from several of them that say, when I look in the mirror, I know who I am and I've led a good life. <clears throat> and, you know, it felt like so wonderful to, because so many of us, we, we're so hard on ourselves. I know I'm like so hard on myself every single day. I struggle with trying to, you know, it, we all do. Don't you think of, most, most people do. Uh, Randy it, doesn't. <laughs> 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 and, just being here at the festival, uh, I just feel so warm to be with these two people who have brought this to life and to be hosted here in your wonderful spaces. And honestly, it's a high point of my life. So, oh. so thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you because it's a highlight of all of our lives. Because <laughs> look what you've brought to us. I mean, amazing photography, amazing work. How many? books have been published already? 16. 16 books. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they're the 17th amazing. 17th is on the way. Right, She's that's hard right. at work on that That's still. right. Always working on a new book. I, and I love that. I love that about you. It's it's reinventing yourself every single time or coming up with ideas that, you know, takes you through, through life. So, you know, if you were to measure your life, like you were just talking about, um, how, how would you describe that? How would you describe your own life in, in your own words? Gosh, that's a big question. Uh, I think I'm a truth teller. I think I've always been a truth teller growing up, been a poor family, luckily in a very wealthy town, so the public schools were good. I did well, but there was, you know, I always felt that I wasn't quite good enough, you know, uh, and, and, and just pushing myself to get a scholarship to France that was offered and, you know, forging my mother's signature because she, she didn't understand why I would even try because, heck, who was I uh, to try? And, and I've been like that my whole life. I, I have two sisters that I'm very, very close to. We were three girls and four years. And they all, and they're successful artists themselves, but they all, when we, we get together, they always say, why were you so different from us that you could really push yourself like that? Uh, and I don't know I, I, where it came from, but I just knew that I'd rather die than not to speak in my own voice and to go for it. Mm -hmm. And so that's a pretty big incentive. Yeah. Right. I, think, <laughs> I think when you see the film, I mean, that's one of the things that struck me coming into this project and watching the footage and working with everybody. It was very inspiring to me as a filmmaker um, and another artist to see how fearless Joyce was in following her vision and her voice, which is scary and hard to do, especially as a woman and especially when people are telling you it's not whatever they're saying. That's a beautiful thing, is to really connect, identify, and express your own voice. It's magical and it's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. And Joyce's story for me, personally in telling this story, that was really kept us go, kept me going, you know, over the time it takes to make a film. It's a, it's a really beautiful part of Joyce's story. Very and inspiring. Another thing I'd like to say is that in the end, I think I'll be most proud of mentor, the mentoring I've done over the years. I've, I've always loved teaching because I don't teach uh, technique. I, I try to just mentor people, I get a sense of what their journey could be like and I give them clues as what what their next steps could be. And, and encouraging them to find their voice. And, and encouraging them to do work that's meaningful to them in some way and not worry about the un outcomes, just to believe in themselves. Right, and you know, I just I do want to mention um, your son Alex. Yes. Your granddaughter Ruby. Ruby. And then you have two grandsons. I have twin grandsons who are like my very best friends because they love art and I've been taking them to openings and stuff. They just, since they were nine, and they, they, they are like soulmates to me. Um, it's interesting, the girls. I two took, girls. The two the girls, two girls that are, yeah. um, one is in college and the other one's going next year. 
and they like art, but they, you know, it's not the passion that I had or that the boys have. Um, so it's so interesting. I think we are such a combination of our genetic, um, you know, selves, and and we all have we all have a journey to to complete and. And speaking it's, of journeys, yes. so Alex, her son, and Ruby, granddaughter, do play a major role in the film, and that was not by design. Mm -hmm. And I, it's one of those true stories of art imitating life. In the middle of the making of this film, there were some very real family issues that came up, dealing with hard choices Joyce had to make young, earlier in her career about how to navigate being a mother, a wife, uh, and an, an artist, artist, and a career person, um, artist or otherwise, but particularly for an artist. And um, you know th that was a tough journey, and that journey revisited us uh, right in the middle of her life, right in the middle of the film, and and, and you know we were not going to spoil any secrets here, but it really, it really <laughs> became a major part of the film because it showed Joyce's not just her journey as a photographer, but as a person, as a human being, and the trials and tribulations that we all have as families, and the struggles that particularly women face in navigating all those different roles and trying to find, as we have said, a life of wholeness. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Ruby's presence in the film in, in particular is very rich because it's almost as though she, representing a new generation, is helping the previous generations to, to find themselves and find each other. To and heal. that sort of mm -hmm. happens right, on the, right in the film, right in front of you, very organically. I was so thrilled when they asked Ruby, because it just came out of the blue, and she said yes, because you know at that age you can be a little self-conscious. <laughs> And she wrote her college um, essay. You know how everyone has to write the college essay. About some of this family some of drama. The, about this particular piece of family issue that came up. Uh, and I, she reads some of that in the film, and, uh, and she tears up. And uh, I think that we see a kind of humanity. I'm tearing up just so well, that is, A lot of people said they tear up watching because Ruby was so eloquent yes. and mature, uh, but very real at the same time. Another thing that I, I've really surprised me in a way is that I haven't shown the trailer to many people, but uh, the men that have seen it have teared up at the end, that they, they, they feel... Uh, they feel something. I don't know what, but they, they have felt. Uh, I, I was so happy to see that they were connected to the story and and were feeling something. It it made me very very happy. Well, awesome. And uh, the film is being shown when. Today. Today at 4 o'clock in Harkins, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And okay. then Thursday. Friday. At, oh, Friday. At sorry. 10 at 10 a.m. Okay. And then at how the can people find out about your film? There is a website Joyce, called Joyce Tennyson Film dot com. Awesome. Um, is the is the best place. And okay. you spell Tennyson with an E because Alfred Lord Tennyson had a Y. So <laughs> just an all aside. right. And everybody needs to look up Joyce's work. It's absolutely fabulous. My website is just simple Tennyson dot com. Yes. And so thank you all for thank being with so us. Much. Thank you, Joyce. It's been such a pleasure getting to know you and. Um, I, I feel very privileged, so thank you well, so much. Well, we're so happy to be here. We really are. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so grateful to this team, because without them, this wouldn't have happened. Well, magical. your story is going to continue. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank you. And don't forget to hashtag SIFF23 and Sedona Film Fest 23. We'll be back with more from the Sedona International Film Festival after this.